What's up guys, here's Shine. Hello and welcome to my new Photoshop tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to create a text effect in the style of the film logo of the live action remake of Disney's The Lion King. At the same time you'll see that I will also create this text effect as a so-called mock-up where you can always just change the content and the software will adapt the layer styles you've added to the layers. All right, here we go. For start, I've already created a document. The dimensions are kept simple, 900 pixels in width, 800 pixels in height. Of course, it's up to you which dimensions you want. And also when it comes to the background image, and this one here, I've chosen a sand floor from the atmosphere, it fits very much to what we're going to do now. So first we create a text content. For that, we use the text tool here and we choose the font. Lion King regular and for the size let's say 130 points and for the color for the text color let's choose F99700 all right and click OK now when the text alignment is centered let's click here on the center and write in uppercase letters lions King. And you see that line here, that's a form of empty space in this font. To restart, we first here go to backspace and select the S letter, go to character, and increase the tracking of the characters to, let's say, 300. All right. I think that's all right. And for the first and the final letter, let's increase the text size to 150 points here and here and confirm. All right. And now we have to align it to the center. For that, we first select the layer, choose the move tool, select all by pressing command A or strike A. I'll just go up here to select and all. And to align it horizontal, we choose this one. And to align vertical, we choose this one. All right, now it's in the center and we can abort this selection by pressing Command D or Strike D. Or just go up here to Select and there you choose here Deselect. All right, and now we add a so-called stroke to this text layer in the layer styles that can be found down here. Click and choose Stroke. And for the settings, let's start on top, increase the size to two pixels, position center. And for the color, let's choose the same color we've chosen earlier. That's here, F99700, right? Okay, and click OK. In case you're wondering why, in order to make this bold, why don't we choose here this option here. I don't choose Fox Bold because it in this case it would make it too bold. And with the stroke you have more control of the border of the content. All right. So let's close this and now let's convert this layer into a so-called smart object here. All right. This content we've just created is in an own Photoshop document. If you make double click here there you go, it has opened here. The content we've just created here is in this own document. We need this option to create this so-called mock-up. All right, let's go back here. And now let's duplicate this layer by pressing Command J or Strike J. I'll just go up here to Layer and Duplicate Layer. All right, all right. And now we add another layer style to this Smart Object layer. We go down here again and choose Pattern Overlay. For this, I've chosen a pattern with the stone texture with cracks. That is this one here. There you see, it's had many, several cracks. And the blend mode, let's change it to multiply and the scale to 100. All right, link with layer is checked. And that's it now for this layer. Let's click OK. And now we duplicate this layer 
by pressing Command J or Strike J, or just go up here to Layer, Duplicate Layer. First, let's close this. I press Command J, all right? But for this copied layer, we need other layer styles. So for that, we double click here on the effect symbol and let's start with the pattern overlay we already have here. We just have to change it. In this case, I've added another stone texture we need here. That's this one. There you go. You see what's happening here and decrease the opacity to 40%. And now let's go over to gradient overlay here. First, let's start from the top again. Here, check dither to have a smoother gradient and change the blend mode to multiply the opacity to 20%. And the gradient itself, let's click here. We need, in this case, a gradient with transparency that's here, the second one, and just change the color to black. And pull this out. There you go. And click OK. All right. And now we need another. Gradient overlay. For that, we just click here on the plus symbol to duplicate this and just change the settings. In this case, again, we start from the top, change the blend mode to overlay, increase the opacity to maximum, that's 100%, and change the gradient. Let's click here. The color comes now white. There we go. And click OK. And reverse. And that's it. And the final layer we add is now the so-called inner shadow. That's this one. Change the blend mode to screen, the color to white, the opacity to 30%, uncheck use global light so that it's the angle is 90%, and the distance to two pixels, choke zero is okay like that, and the size to one, all right? And that's it now for this layer. The last thing we have to do now is to decrease the interior layer opacity that can be either found here where it says fill or just go here to blending options and here fill opacity and now you decrease it to zero and if you keep your eyes here you'll see what happens if i enter zero there you go see in case you're wondering what just happened let's let's first click here, okay the layer lies above this layer. Let's see, uncheck the visibility here. Above the layer we've just created here earlier. But if it lies above, let's here check this again. It covers everything that is beneath it. So what we did here it takes care of it that the content itself, in this case, the text content we wrote is completely transparent, but without erasing the effects here, because you see the surface looks now totally different than we saw it earlier. For that, you need the interior opacity layer. And now we've created the surface, which looks quite good here, as you see. And now we have to create the extrusion, or as you probably would call it, the 3D effect or the 3D text block that can be seen below. For that, we again duplicate one of these layers. Let's choose this one. Press Command J or Strike J. There you go. But we don't need these layer styles we've added here. So we have to delete them by right clicking on the layer, go down here to clear layer style. That's it. And now we drag this to the bottom yeah, and add now another layer style. Just go here and we choose bevel and emboss. For this case, let's start again from the top. Style inner bevel and technique smooth are okay like that. Just increase the depth to 1000 to maximum. Direction up is good. Size 7 pixels is good. Soft and 0 pixel. All right. And also with the angle and attitudes, just decrease the opacity of the highlight mode to 20%. All right. And click OK. Let's close this. And now we use this layer to create this 3D block. And for that, we have to make a transformation so the software can save it and we can duplicate this layer again and again. And each time we duplicate it, it becomes smaller and smaller so that the many layers we create here build this 3D block here. So first duplicate this layer by pressing Command J or Strike J and we right click, layer style. And you see now, it has changed the look of the layer 
Now it's a totally regular layer, no smart object, no layer styles are now in it. And now we have to press Command T or Strike T, or just go here to Edit and Free Transform. And we look at these transformation values here. We go to the Width value, make sure that the value is shown in pixels. If it's not, you can right click here and choose any kind of value you want, right? And go up here after the X and type minus 0.7 and confirm. Now the transformation has been done and the software has saved it. So we don't need this layer anymore. Let's delete it. And now while this layer is selected, we hold now shift alt command and press T. There you see another layer has been created. And if we do this now a few times, you'll see if you keep your eyes here, that extrusion is going to be built. Let's do this now a few times. Now you see it happens. Now let's do this until number here, let's say says 30, right here, until copy 30. All right, and now while this is selected, we go down here to the bottom and hold shift and select all the layers we've just created to the final layer because we have to arrange them now in the middle, you see, it's not centered. And we do that the same way we did it earlier by pressing Command A or Strike A and align it horizontal by clicking here. There you see, and abort the selection by pressing Command to Strike T, you see. And while these layers are selected, you go up here to Layer, go to Range, and click Reverse. If you keep your eyes here, you see what happens. There you see, it looks now much better. And again, while these layers are selected, we press Command G or Strike G to group them into a folder. There you see, now the overlook is much better. And let's double click here and name it Extrusion or 3D Block or whatever you want to call it and confirm. And now we add layer styles to this folder too. Go down here and choose Color Overlay. Just keep the color black and change the blend mode to Multiply and the opacity to 50%, all right? And the next effect we need is the Gradient Overlay again. You see, there are two here. That's because of the effects we've added earlier. Let's choose the second one here because it has already this black gradient and this is exactly what we need. But before you change the gradient, let's increase the opacity to 100%, decrease the scale to 30%, all right? And now go here to the gradient. And all you have to do now is to drag this opacity stop, this white one, and drag it until this number here, the location says 50%, because this white stop says that the opacity is zero, which is what you can see here. That's why this one is black, because if you click here, it's 100%. And we now hold Alt and drag this to make a copy and drag it until the end. There you go. This is the kind of gradient we need now. And that's it. And click OK. There you see a small gradient here on the top and on the bottom has been created here. And the final effect we add is now again the pattern overlay. And in this case, again, you don't have to change here much just the opacity and the scale to 50%. All right. And now we see a little texture is now over the extrusion, you see? And that's it now for the extrusion. Let's click here, okay. All right, let's close this. And now, while this is selected, hold Shift and select here all the layers and group them again Let's press Command G or Strike G and add another final layer style to this group again. Go down here and add Drop Shadow. For this, you increase the opacity to 80%. Uncheck Use Global Light, but change the angle back to 45 degrees. Distance 8 pixels, spread 0% and size 5 pixels. There you go. Now a shadow has been created, which makes it look a bit more realistic and click OK and close this. And let's name this to yeah, Lions K. King. All right, and that's it. That's how you can create Lion King text effect.
And as I mentioned earlier, it's also a mock-up. So if we here open this and double click to any one of the layers, which one you click on, it's, it doesn't matter because they're just twins of the one same content. So if I double click here, it was already open here. And if you just change this content, you see that the document will adapt these values. So let's write, for example, Simba, okay, confirm and save by command S or strike S because of the fact it's in an own document, you have to save the changes. All right, let's do it. You see, it just saves. And if we go back here to the main document, you see it has changed the content, but the values, the layers still remain the same. If we go back here and reverse it by command set or strike set, there you go, and change it again. If it hasn't been changed, you see it on a little star here. Save it. Again. Go back. There you see. All right. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and it helped you to get better in Photoshop. Don't forget to check out my other tutorial videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye.